All right, car is running. You see or hear nothing out of ordinary. Now let's go check the computer. Guys, will you look at that? Yes! Oh! Ah, thank you. Good God. Uh, I will not lie. I was a little concerned. Now, again, I have not repaired the car. I have simulated a repair. Okay, and I've done that by way of cleaning the terminal or the connector or the pins at the PCM, guys. Uh, Y'all remember all the moisture was on there and those green gremlins? I merely tried to clean that up using an electronic contact cleaner. Alright. Ah, but I'm so relieved to see the code's not coming back, guys. Yes. Well, we was concerned what if it was active. Active is bad. Okay, active is now. Active is good. <laughs> I know that sounds contradictory, but it is. Active is good. What, what I hate is uh, uh, intermittent problems. And something just showed up on the ABS. See, steering angle. That's all. Nothing related to what I'm doing. So, I will let them know about this. I'm concerned about the check engine light and the lightning bolt. That should not be back on. Yes. All right, guys. Let's go to the car and uh, I'm going to give you all my final thoughts. Because I have to wrap this up. I've been on this car. Way too long. All right, stay tuned. Here I go. I'll be right back. Ooh, welcome back, guys. Uh, I'm still here on this video, guys. We up to part four. I'm going to go through this fairly quickly. I had no uh, plans on this being a four-part series, but, guys, I can say it was necessary. And I refuse to close this video out without showing you guys exactly what the problem was. Okay, I'm sure you watched part one, two, and three. You saw me merely try some things. You saw me patch some things up just to see if my problem would go away. Yes, I accomplished all of that. Now, I don't want to shut this series down or even this part four video down. That's why I opened it back up without showing you guys exactly what the problem is. In fact, I'm going to show you how I came to this conclusion. Okay, so let's do this, guys. I want you to go back to this connector where we saw the gremlin. All right. Now, as you can see... The gremlins are mostly seen over here in this area. Now, you can be petty and track down all of these terminals. Look at your wiring diagram and find out where these terminals go. Because likely that is where the liquid, this liquid we found, guys. We found liquid coolant, okay? Now, uh, like I say, you can be petty. Not really petty. I'm using Im immature words. You can uh, spend a lot of time tracking these terminal downs and finding out where that coolant likely came from guys what's going on coolant it turned out to be coolant okay, okay. Yeah, so a lot yes. of input and, uh, uh, was given or in the comment section as far as this problem even my man uh ruley 73 i want to say ruley 73 he advised to check the uh weather strip these are supposed to be weather weather proof tight okay uh you do not it's a seal on here that will try to prevent moisture or water from getting in it but this is one of those cases where water didn't get in it externally this was induced from in this is internal problem so thank you ruley 73 for that input i got some inputs from tom cook uh a form another chrysler tech and i got some inputs from uh my man my man what's his name uh uh raf comrade i think that was his name raf comrade raf mr raf mr comrade thank you my man appreciate it uh you are exactly on to something in fact i had did some uh I had to go back in my memory bank and uh, remember, yes, it's a long history on especially the cop cars. But if you look at these, you will find that, uh, let's, let's say this terminal right here. Matter of fact, let's go to the wiring diagram. Okay, guys, if you look right here, this is the cooling sensor, okay? Now, this cooling sensor is going to have, uh, let me stroll down because you're going to have, it's a two-wire uh, sensor, guys. All right. Uh, now, if you look down closely, you will see uh, ETC signal. Okay, this is the PCM. This box represents the PCM. Okay, this violet and orange wire comes directly from the coolant temp sensor to the PCM. Okay, the sensor ground will go through some channels. So the likelihood of that coolant making it to this is on connector two, guys. See all of those pins? It was like four or five pins. They all was corroded and started high resistant. Okay. I looked at the connector and the connector terminal matches this terminal. Okay, now this is the long way. This is the long way of going by and verifying it. Okay, you can physically look at it. 
but I want to show you guys this, some of the steps I've taken or I took to get to this point. All right, that cooling system is hardwired directly to this PCM connected to that orange connector is connected to one of those terminals. Uh, actually, it was 20. Terminal 20, okay? <laughs> one of those was actually corroded, so that is likely where the coolant came from. Now, let's go back to the car, all right? We're back at the car. So, guys, what I wanted, I just wanted to show you this. I still have some cleaning out to do, and we're going to uh, use some dielectric grease to uh, try to help this, help uh, dissipate some of that moisture. We don't need that moisture in it, or you will always have uh, high resistance uh, gremlins in here. All right, now, to the actual problem. Now that we have verified that this likely, the liquid was likely coolant and it likely came uh, from an internal source. <laughs> yes, guys, a pressure sensor can push a uh, liquid, whatever is monitoring, let's say an oil pressure sending unit. Yes, it can literally push oil through a wiring harness all the way up to a controller. Uh, yes, it's crazy. Now, so we're talking cooling, right? Let's go to the actual cooling sensor. And guys, this is a Hemi. That cooling sensor is housed in this area, so I'm going to remove this air cleaner. And what you will see, uh, the cooling sensor. Now, I want you to look at something. I want you to pay close attention. Do you see this? This is cheap plastic. Guys, I do not think this is OEM. I do not think this is quality. In fact, let's take a stroll. All right, I want you all to see something. Here's a Hemi down here on a Chrysler 300. This is 6.4. Uh, 392 but it's the same thing now take a look at that sensor do you see how strong OEM high quality that sensor is yes that is the way it's supposed to be now let's go back to the car okay this plastic piece of crap sensor was likely replaced by somebody else now what I want to do is this we're going to open this get this out look at that guys already liquid you can see let me see if i can get y'all a do y'all see that yes guys now what's weird or what's uh the coolant <laughs> came from here this pressure inside this water pump housing or yes water pump housing i guess the sensor have to be made of quality guys now it's not a pressure sensor it's not a coolant pressure sensor this is merely a coolant temp sensor okay i expect this out of all pressure sensor anything that's measuring pressure will have the liquid forced up again it against it so the sensor can read it properly and display that information to the controller but this is merely a coolant temp sensor meaning it measures the temperature of the coolant okay i do not think i think the proper name of this i could be wrong but i think the proper name of this is coolant temp sensor all right well if that's the case this sensor is so garbage so weak so terrible that it's allowing coolant <laughs> pressure to travel through this is wet that's cooling in there it is allowing coolant to be to go through here through the harness all the way up to the pcm that could have cost you that could have became catastrophic guys you could really literally need uh, a wiring harness right now okay i was told to put it together and hope for the best yes okay but i can't give an estimate on an engine wire harness and a controller one guy suggested i replace the controller that is uh the controller yes it could be it could have failed that liquid could have gotten on the circuit board i don't know but my earlier starting it up the code is not active anymore so uh, I did some backtracking again. Thanks to my man. Thanks to everybody that chimed in. I don't want to leave anybody out on this problem. I have seen this problem. This my memory bank is clogged up and it wouldn't register at the time. So what do I do, guys? We got to fix the problem. Now there's no way I can try blowing this. There's no way I can get air pressure to go all through all that and up there. So like I say, we got to hope for the best. But in the meantime, I will clean this out. I will use electric, electric, uh, electrical contact cleaner, and my dielectric grease we want to try to uh try to stop that moisture okay now what do i have got in order to fix the problem okay or we don't want solutions well we don't want uh patches okay i merely have to replace this coolant temp sensor with high quality look at that mopar oem guys mopar i'm a big fan of oem parts this is garbage i don't know where it came from and i don't want to call out parts stores all right because there's a lot okay likely this is a whole lot cheaper than this look at the comparator two guys 
this looks so much quality okay there's no way that coolant gonna penetrate <laughs> through the sensor and operate and get through all the wiring harness it may do so on this but not this high quality OEM guys I'm a big fan of OEM okay always use OEM when it comes to stuff like this all right especially cam and crank O2 sensors thing I have a whole video coming up on the top five parts I think should only be OEM yes only guys this could have been catastrophic this could have drove some mechanic crazy this could cost a lot of money if you're not careful all right I'm a try I would try to avoid all of that by doing what I'm gonna do now let's get this cheap piece of crap off of here right now look at that it's just plastic is it three is even moving that's how cheap this thing now, I'm gonna lose some cooling I suspect if it's full I'm gonna lose some cooling but it doesn't matter I want this garbage out of here letting coolant penetrate all right I'm about to do this fast and I don't want to make a mess so I'm gonna yank this out and screw this in fairly quickly let's get it all right wasn't that bad yes you're not gonna penetrate through a tough OEM Mopar coolant temp sensor Mr. Hemi I don't know if that's a Hemi problem it's not a Hemi problem that's a cheap parts look at this So it could be something simple as a pinhole inside this thing. This the coolant gotta go somewhere. Coolant, yeah, keep in mind anything under pressure is trying to escape. Okay, if this is weak the weakest point, it's coming out of here, guys. I'm curious to know if I had pressurized this coolant system. A coolant pressure tester, y'all know where you pump it up and build pressure. I'm almost wondering it would it had exploded through here. No, likely I would have been pushing coolant through the harness because this cheap thing has failed. All right, guys, uh, this video is way too long. Guys, I hope y'all got something out of this. I'm about to wrap this up. Okay, again, I refuse to close this four-part series out without showing you the actual physical problem. All right, thing. welcome to YouTube. I refuse to shut this video down without showing you. I could have easily left that out and kept that on the wraps, but... No sense in starting part one if I'm not going to show you the ending results. And that's it. That's all I have, guys. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. I got a lot of uh, behind-the-scene work to do. Yes, this is good stuff. Off-camera stuff I got to do. And I'm going to do it. You don't need to. There's no point, okay? You, I told y'all what I'm about to do. All right, so the camera got to be shut down now. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all on the next video.